The two exercises you can see on screen are sometimes taught as bladder control exercises for men. Which one of these exercises do you think is the most effective for improving bladder control? Hi, I'm Michelle, and unfortunately neither of these two exercises will improve your bladder control. These exercises, while they're still taught sometimes as Kegel exercises, they're actually exercises for your buttocks, for your hips and for your thighs. They won't do anything for improving your bladder control, so you're wasting your time if you're doing those. Today we're going to go through the correct Kegel exercises to do for improving your bladder control. I'm going to show you the two key steps that you need to do to activate these muscles and then I'm going to teach you how to train these muscles most effectively. Now just before we start you need to know where these muscles are. So I just talked about the hip muscles and the buttock muscles that you were actually training with the other exercises. You can see those outside the pelvis. So this is the pelvis those muscles sit outside. The muscles you need to train for these exercises, for Kegel exercises for bladder control, are in and around the pelvis. They sit here at the base of the pelvis, which is why they're called the pelvic floor muscles. You can see them here highlighted in blue. Now, the important muscles to train for your bladder control are the muscles at the front for men. So we're not so much worried about the muscles around the anus, we're looking at the muscles and we're strengthening the muscles that are around the front. Now there's two key steps to activating these muscles. Let's go through these key steps. The first step is to visualize or imagine you're stopping the flow of urine and contract the muscles in and around your penis as if you're stopping the flow. You can test this, do it once a week, but try not to do it as a regular exercise when you're emptying your bladder because it can interfere with bladder emptying and cause problems with bladder emptying. So that's step one, is to imagine you're stopping the flow and you can test that to see whether it's working or not. The second step is to shorten the penis. The action is to shorten the penis as if you're, as if it's a turtle pulling its head into its shell. So retracting its head back into a shell and then relaxing. So those are the two important parts of your Kegel exercise for bladder control. Stopping the flow and shortening the penis. Then relaxing the muscles back to resting. Now if you're not sure whether you're shortening well enough or not, you can stand side on to a mirror and you can look for that shortening retraction acts, um, action and then see the re relaxation as well. Really important that you get those two steps going together before you actually start your training. Now, how to train most effectively? Well, the first part is to do a combination of both long and short Kegel exercises in your bladder control training exercise regime. Now long Kegel exercises are exercises that you hold for a long duration of time. So we look at for men holding up to 10 seconds. So that means doing the action that I just described, um, shortening and stopping the flow and holding it for one and two and up to your 10 seconds. And then you repeat that um, a number of times per set during the day. And we try to get you to do up to six sets a day of 10 exercises. So quite a few exercises of your long exercises. We also try to get you to do short exercises. Now, the other exercises, the longer ones were for muscle endurance. The short ones are short fast holds, they're one second lift lower or contract relax and these are for strength and for power to control the bladder it's actually an exercise called the knack and they control bladder leaks with um, um, activities like coughing sneezing heavy lifting so we also try to get you to do 10 of those short exercises in a row as well six times a day so if you're not sure about the number of exercises you need to be doing just stay tuned because my next video coming up and I'll also link it above is on how many Kegel exercises you need to do for training I'm not going to go into that so much today now the third thing we need to go through is the best positions for doing your Kegel exercises for improving your bladder control now when you start out the muscles might be weak, which means you might need to start lying down. Perhaps you can start lying down uh, on a lounge or on a bed with your knees bent and do that action that I talked about, doing your long exercises and doing your short exercises. Now, as you improve, and you can imagine if you're lying down, pelvic floor muscles are like that, so they're not under any load. We then get you to actually move into sitting. So if you're sitting on a chair, 
you can then start to lift the muscles against gravity, which is really important for strengthening and making the best strength gains you can for your pelvic floor muscles. So you can do those exercises there. And the other benefit from sitting is sometimes you can feel the muscles around the base of the penis contracting and moving away from the chair. So it acts as a good reference point for some feedback about the correctness of your exercise. Now finally, um, we get you to do your exercises in standing because standing is the position that you really most likely to leak or leak urine. So this is the position that you really need to practice in. And also too, you'll make your most strength gains lifting against gravity when you are in standing as opposed to lying down. So standing exercises are really important. If you can do standing exercises when you first start out, fantastic, start with your standing exercises. Now, finally, I want to talk about functional training. This is a really important part of bladder control exercises for men, and it's often overlooked. Functional training means to train your muscles for when you really need them to work. So it's all well and good to do your exercises, but if you don't use them when you need them, for example, before and during a cough, before and during a sneeze, before and during lifting, those are the times where you're more inclined to have stress incontinence. So those are the times that you need to practice those exercises. If you're a gentleman that has problems leaking when you go from sitting to standing, contract your pelvic floor muscles with the technique that I've already described when you're sitting and as you move into standing so that you actually get that pre-contraction happening as you move into standing and practice doing that um, when, when the bladder isn't full so that you can actually improve your condition so that when the bladder is full, you're more likely to be able to hold and remain continent. And remember, finally, I talked about the importance of uh, doing your exercises standing because that is the position that you're most likely to leak. So it's important to practice your exercises in preparation for when your bladder is full and when you're more likely to leak in standing. So we've talked about quite a lot there, haven't we? We've talked about the two key essential parts of your Kegel exercise for bladder control. We've also talked about the positions to start your exercises in to train most effectively for bladder control. And then we talked about doing long and short exercises and the importance of functional training. So I really hope this information helps you with Kegel exercises that improve your bladder control. And if you've liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you can give it a like below because then YouTube will show it to other men that can benefit from this information as well. Thanks so much for watching today. Look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.